Good morning everyone. I mean hello everyone. So today uh, we are going to discuss about the uh, Newton's law of motion and its application. So last time we already described the motion of an object using its acceleration, calculating its velocity, yung position niya, at saka displacement. So uh, that is in the world of kinematics kasi we know that kinematics is just a branch of mechanics that will describe the motion of an object without any idea of what causes the motion or, or ano yung agent na nag ng motion niya. Okay? So at this point in our discussion, we are done with kinematics. So we have kinematics in one dimension and then we also have kinematics in two dimensions. So here, uh, we are going to discuss about na the dynamics. So dynamics is again, uh, just like what I said nung sa pinaka first na uh, module 3 I think. So yung kinematics in one dimension, we know that the uh, dynamics is actually the study of what causes the motion. Okay, so that is the Newton's law of motion uh, will come in. Okay. So first, we have, this is the outline of our discussion today. So we have the definition of force. Then we have the three laws of motion by Newton. And then we have to apply these three laws of motion to physical system to describe or to, you know, to get the knowledge of dynamics of some uh, physical systems. So we have the uh, Newton's law of motion. So, what is force nga pala? So, force is like your kinder, ah, uh, usaman, yung uh, high school na definition is like a push or pull. Diba? So, when you push something, you exert a force. When you pull something, you also exert a force. But in, you know, in definition with sa force is, since we are now in college physics, we have to understand that force is something, uh, about interaction so something to do with interaction between two bodies or between a body and its environment so pwedeng dalawang bodies ang nag-interact that is called the forces and uh, that is also the definition of force or pwede ring between a body at saka yung environment niya so because the environment can also be a factor on why an object uh is you know moving or something like that because they exert also a force on a system okay so this is called the uh, uh that is the force now there are many kinds of forces okay so for first kind of force is called about the contact force okay so from the word contact my physical contact between two objects Okay, so there are three uh, examples of contact forces that we are going to discuss in mechanics that we actually, you know, ato ju siyang always ma, ma kita in ato mechanics nga problem. So we have here the normal force, the friction force, and the tension force. So these are the three main contact forces. But of course, there are many mamampud na mga contact forces. Okay, but these are just the three common nga. Uh, we can uh, observe in our physical systems for our problem today. Okay? So, ano pa lang yung normal force? So, we know that normal force in your experiment number 4 that it is some a force exerted by any surface on the object. Okay? For example, if this one, uh, yung o uh, yung box mo or object is in the something like a uh, surface. So, of course, uh, the the surface will exert a uh, force to the object and that is called the normal force. Okay? So, which is going upward. Kasi yung pag-exert ng force ng surface mo is going pa naman, di ba? And then, the normal force, normal in physics is actually is uh, usually called perpendicular. So, yung normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. 
and that is why normal force exists only if your object is on the surface. Kung wala siya sa surface, then there's no normal force. Okay, because remember that normal force is siya ang, ga, ang surface, ang ga-exert of force. So without the surface, we will, we will, wala tayo normal force. Okay, so normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. Kahit naka-incline man siya, ganito, or in a straight line lang, it is always perpendicular, meaning at 90 degrees on the surface. So we have the normal force. It is always 90 degrees on the surface. So we have this one. So if you have to extend this one, so parang 90 degrees siya, di ba? So yeah, always 90 degrees. Another type of contact force is the friction force, which we already know again in experiment number four, right? If all of you are, is my, are my students in my physics 81.1 nga, experiment. So, friction force is, again, exerted by any surface, but it is always parallel to the surface. Kasi, it is opposing the motion of the object or opposing any external forces. So, for example, like this one, if yung object mo is moving in this direction, okay, so yung friction force mo, if yung surface mo is, hindi siya frictionless, so, meaning na ashe friction, kaya hindi mo siya frictionless. So, the friction force is always opposing to the motion of the object. So, if dun yung motion ng object mo, so yung friction is opposing. Okay? So, just like your normal force, yung friction force needs a surface. Okay? Because uh, yung surface kasi yung nag-exert ng force on the object. However, Yung difference lang yung normal force at saka yung friction force is yung normal force is always perpendicular to the surface but your friction force is always parallel to the surface. Okay, so parallel siya and the direction of the friction force depending on the motion or the external force. Okay, kung mag kung mag push ko object in this direction, okay, na mag apply ko force diha, di ba? So this is my applied force. And then the friction force is of course opposing the applied force. So mo nang padulong siya dito. Okay, pero kung dito naman po imong applied force, kung anak na po siya, then therefore your friction force is again parallel to the, um, hindi siya parallel, uh, yung ano, opposing the applied force that you apply on the object. Okay, so that is friction force. And the last type of contact force that we are going to discuss is the tension force. So, tension is actually the force exerted by any kind of rope cord on an object. So, if na kay thread, na kay string, na kay rope, na kay cord. So, kanang pag-pull ni mo sa kanang uh, string or sa rope, that is called the tension force. So, siya ang nag- pull sa object. So, as you can see here, if mag-apply ka og, og force on the rope here that connecting to the object, what you are really applying is actually the tension force because you pull the object by using a rope or chaka cord or any like, ten, uh, any kanang connection to the <laughs> to the object. Mapa kuan man yan, mapa rope, mapa cord, mapa string, mapa thread. So, the pulling force is actually called the tension force. Okay? So, that's actually the three kinds of forces. I mean, the three types of forces under contact force. Okay? So, the next naman na force that uh, hindi man siya always na uh, usually kanang very vital good in physics is the long range forces. Or some book also call this as the non-contact forces or the field forces. So from the word non-contact, so wala siyang involvement ng physical contact unlike sa contact forces, okay? As the name suggests, di ba? But act through empty space, okay? So, uh, yeah. So from the word field forces, so these are the forces mediated by uh, field. So, ano pala yung field? So, field is actually like uh, 
imaginary or something like uh, mediation of force between two objects or two charges or two magnetic materials. So, for example, if your object is actually in a gravitational field, so just like our Earth, we have the gravitational field of Earth. So, just like us, we are, for example, if I am, uh, if I, uh, if I am your, the M here, and the capital letter M is the Earth, so of course, if, if, muadto ka sa gawa sa Earth, what you're going to do, uh, what the uh, force exerted by the Earth on you is actually pushing downward, which is actually our weight. Diba? So, which, which is actually equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So, long-range forces siya because of the fact that the this force can actually be, you know, pwede ka mga interact with a uh, greater distance. Okay? So, as you can see here, kahit uh, walang contact with each other, nag exert din yung force uh, between two masses in terms of gravitational forces. Okay, so para mora, mora lagi pong kag nag, uh, for example, nag throw ka og ball pa upwards, of course, the ball will eventually fall out because of the fact na na-under man siya sa gravitational field sa Earth, which is pushing the object downward. Okay, so under the influence man siya of the gravitational field of the Earth. Okay, so hinwala siyang involvement na physical contact but can also exert forces through empty space. Okay. So, another forces that we are going to, uh, another example of long-range forces is actually called electric force. So, electric force is, uh, these are the forces exerted by any charge object to charge object. For, so, hindi, uh, dilip man na siya actually ma, ma, ma example here because of the uh, because kay mechanics man ta. so electric force are actually in your physics 82 so you can uh, discuss more electric forces in your physics 82 so just like your gravitational force mediated siya or the interaction of two charge object is mediated but what but what we called as the field or the electric field for this case okay so so you can see here that we have a positive Q, a negative Q, so of course, it attract niya because that is the electrical nature of, uh, you know, charge object, diba? So, next, long-range forces, another type of long-range forces or field forces is the magnetic force. So, again, magnetic force, dili kayo na to siya ma-discuss here because we are mechanics, man. So, you can discuss this one in your next physics nga subject. So, magnetic force is again mediated by field uh, kaya nga tinatawag sila nga field forces because they are mediated i mean the force uh, the interaction between two objects mapa mass man yan or charge object are mediated by uh, field okay so magnetic force is exerted by any magnetic material just uh, for example na kay magnet then you actually put an iron near the magnet of course it will attract the magnet because of the magnetic property of your iron and this actually mediated by magnetic field so even though we cannot see the magnetic field the electric field and gravitational field but we oh, we, we we actually experience the forces that mediated by this field so of course we cannot neglect the fact that na i field even though they are imaginary lines okay so these are just kanang uh, two to visualize the uh, interaction between uh, objects using field forces. So, yun lang. Yung yung mga uh, type of forces. So, we have the contact force and then we have the long-range forces. So, usually, yung uh, ato yung makuan nga field forces is the gravitational field. Kanigud na example. Okay, this one is actually in your physics 82 na. As you go uh, to physics 82 soon. Okay? So, how to measure force? So, of course, in physics laboratory, usually the, uh, they will use a spring balance to measure the force uh, exerted by any object. So, kay, since naamanta sa like pandemic ka dun, so we cannot actually appreciate 
spring balance but uh, actually na spring balance sa itong laboratory sa UP okay so as you can see here this is actually the spring balance so kanisha is uh, connected to a coil here so magdagandagan ng kwandri kaning bitawang pointer ka na siya kanisha so if you connect the hook to the any object then maka kwa na ka sa weight or sa force exerted by any object Okay, so again, di kaya na ito siya makuhaan ka ron kay, yun naman ito sa pandemic ka ron. Okay, so but if you want, you can actually, uh, you know, ask me to demonstrate how to use spring balance. But, yeah, so di po ko ito sa UP. Okay, so anyway, so let's move on to uh, additional forces. Okay, so... We know that in your, again, so inyo na, inyo na ni siyang na, na encounter in your experiment number 2 about superposition of forces or the adding forces. So we know from the fact that force is a vector quantity. So mawag na ang pinaka may na to ang quantity. Force is a vector quantity. So meaning that it needs both magnitude and direction to fully describe what is force because it is a vector quantity. So, because kay vectorial man atong property sa atong force, what will happen is we have to add two or more forces vectorially. So, meaning, dilil na to siya i-add ng sagito, algebraically or like 1 plus 1. Dilil lang kayo ng, dilil lang kayo na simply adding like 1 plus 1. So, again, vector quantity is different from scalar quantity. Di ba? So, the sum of two or more forces is what we called as the resultant okay or denoted by letter r so i will not going to discuss deeper here because i uh you already encountered this one to uh vector katong module to na to and then also sa inyo experiment number two okay sa atom physics 81.1 okay actually yung uh we can add simply the forces vectorially because of the fact that meron tayong tinatawag na superposition of forces Okay, so we can add them together because they are called superposition. So meaning adding forces each, uh, with each other. Okay, so if we have two or more forces, we simply add them vectorially. And to find the resultant or the vector sum of two or more forces is we just have to take, say, something like square root of the Rx squared plus Ry squared. This is the X and Y component of your resultant respectively. So, ito yung magnitude ng resultant natin. And if you want to get the direction, which is specified by the angle, so we have the inverse tan of your y, ry over rx. Okay? So, force is a vector quantity. That is why we can de decompose uh, a force you exert on a specific object into components. So, you already know that one. So, the forces along, uh, the component along x is your fx, and the component along y is your fy, and the fx and fy can be, uh, ilahang value can be found using the theta here, the orientation of the angle with respect to the origin. So, we have the origin here. So, yeah, I think uh, you already know uh, the idea of how to find the resultant or vector sum but i will not usually discuss uh, i will not usually give an example about superposition of forces here because ato naman lang siyang nakuan sa again sa vector okay so yeah mo ni ato ang main topic for today which is the newton's first law of motion or the three laws of motion which governs actually the uh, motion of an object specific, specifically sa itong mga everyday experience in our life, okay? So, yeah. Three laws of motion. So, first law of motion ni Newton or ni Isaac Newton is actually called the law of inertia. Okay? So, unsa man ni ang uh, law of inertia di ay? So, for example, if I have three, ano here, three, like, some ni siya, three situation, Okay? So, I have here a pack, hockey pack. So, as you can see ka nang sa inyo, bitong dula-dula ninyo, okay? A hockey pack on the table, a hockey pack on the ice, and a hockey pack on the 
air flow systems ay muhang table. So, kaning mga holes dili is actually uh, diha mo gawas ang mga air to, you know, minimize friction as much as possible na itong ipagamay. So, here, uh, if I move the pack padung dad to, we have a distance na yun ani in a table. But in ice, if I move it uh, that one, so meaning mas less ang friction sa ice compare sa table, so therefore your object will move at larger distance compared to na asya sa table. Now, i compare na po na to siya sa kaning airflow system sa atong hockey pack table. What will happen is it will, of course, move to a larger distance since yung airflow system ng hockey puck uh, is less yung friction niya compare sa ice at saka table. Di ba? So, what I mean here is that uh, the forces acting on the object uh, is actually... Uh, Kanang does not need additional forces to make the body move uh, like continually. Diba? Mara siya ginana bitaw. So, if we neglect totally the friction, what will happen is at the start pa lang of the, of the motion is it will move, it will continue to move without even like continuing na mo-apply kag force. Diba? Kanilang sa 3... Three situation, we already know that this has forces. So meaning, at the end of the motion, we stop gisha because of friction, diba? So now, if we neglect totally the friction in our system, what will happen is that the object is actually moving continually. So without, you know, acting or applying forces from time to time, diba? So, yeah. Once a body is set in motion, there is no net force needed to keep it moving. Okay, so walang net force na uh, needed para yung object mo is continually moving. Because according to inertia, to the law of inertia or the first law of motion, when an object is at rest, it will remain at rest. Okay, when an object is in motion, it will remain in motion with a constant speed or constant velocity unless merong external forces so for example if uh, if an object is moving okay moving siya and then yung yung surface na uh, ob na asa nimo gibutang imong object is actually hindi siya frictionless so what will happen is the friction is actually the external forces so it will act and act and act until the object will eventually stop at the end sa yung motion because of the external forces nga gina-exert ni surface. But if we again neglect the idea nga na friction sa ato ang surface or wala if, uh, wala if friction gin siya totally what will happen is the object will move in a constant velocity. Okay? So, mawala to siya. So, dili ta kailangan og net force para ang object mo move siya. Okay? Unless, naaka external forces. Like, for example, imong stop eventually ang object using sa hand and the hand represent your external forces. Diba? So, mawala mo stop siya. Okay? Imo mo siyang gi-stop or imo mo siyang gi-stop gi using hand. Imo mo siyang gi na may barrier or mabutang ka og wall. So, if uh, if imo move ang object, once a body set in motion, it will continue to move. Then, kung bangga siya sa wall, of course, must stop siya because the wall represent your external forces. So, ano bitaw? Okay, so mo to siya. So, mo na ang first law of motion. So, <clears throat> so since we are talking about inertia, so ano pala yung inertia? So, inertia is actually the tendency of a body to keep moving once it is in motion. Yeah. So, for example, nga, ga move na imong object, so it will continue to move again in constant velocity. And that is inertia. Like, for example, like this one, there are three cases where inertia uh, occur. For example, if nagkuan ka og bike, you, I, I mean motor bike, kung sa tawag ang nga kuan motor, so when you eventu eventually ka nang maka-encounter og barrier, what will happen is the 
bike eventually stop but you actually continue to move because you are now set in motion okay so mo nang mo move ka and then eventually mo uh, mo malayo ka dadto di ba so as you can see here sa imuhang uh, sa imuhang figure okay now for the rest food is for example like this one okay since yung coin mo is a uh, state at rest naman siya so if you eventually like get the cardboard or the paper uh, under the coin so at the time nga nagreact ang imuhang uh, like gamay lang imuhang ka ng kanba murag like imo siyang kaliton og kuha ang imuhang paper so eventually yung coin mo will remain at rest and then since wala naman siya surface so muhamuhagbong siya sa imuhang glass until it remains at rest when ana ang inertia and we also have this one na akay coin then akay paper here this is actually a paper then if you uh were using a ball pen so imo siyang i-move so uh, what will happen is the coin here will not move together with the with the kaning ball of kaning circle na paper here it will fall until it will remain uh at rest so mag maintain siya iya ha, sa iyang rest state because again inertia an object is at rest remains at rest an object is in motion remains in motion okay so inertia is actually directly related to the mass of an object so uh, what i mean here is the the larger the mass the harder to keep uh, the harder to move the object because dako man yung mass, di ba? So, dako, dako good yung inertia. Kailangan gini mo dako nga force para mo move ang object. Okay? So, since ang inertia is directly related to mass, the, the mass is actually the property of an object that will resist a change in motion. For example, nakay dako nga rock. Okay? So, ang rock is at rest. And you try to move that one okay, since dako man siya o uh, mass, so meaning, dako siya og inertia, meaning, lisod siya i, i kanang, i move, okay, para mo, mo hawa siya sa yung rest state, okay, because og dako man siya nga inertia ana bitaw, so meaning, the larger the inertia, or the larger the mass the larger the inertia, and the harder to move the object, okay, and the harder to resist a change in motion, for example, uh Napo kay dako nga mass. Okay? So, ni move siya. Ni move, ni move, ni move, ni move siya. And then, after that, eventually kay, okay, na ako yung kanha. Dako nga, dako siya nga mass. Eventually, ni move siya at constant velocity. Then, na ako yung glass dari. Okay? So, what will happen is, kay since nag-move man siya here, dako man siya inertia here because of dako siya mass. So, what will happen, kung naka yung glass nga, kung dari, barrier, so it will break because of the fact nga alisud uh, kaysa i i change ang iyong motion okay so we can actually kanang malis malidot masidot niya i discuss using uh, conservation of energy but anyway so that is the idea of inertia okay so yeah so in Newton's first law what matters the most is the net force okay so even though the forces on the object is actually not equal to zero. Again, for example, uh, nagres ako ang coin here. Of course, nagid siya normal force because na may surface. Napud siya weight, de ba? So basically, yung forces natin on the coin that is at rest is actually not equal to zero. Kasi may may normal force ka, meron ka ding uh, weight of the object. But if you add all of them, so that is actually the uh, representation of why the object remains at rest. Because the net force is actually equal to zero. This means that the normal force is actually equal to the weight of the object. So, mo nang at rest ang imuhang object. So, what matters the most is actually the net force on the object. Okay? So, if the net force is equal to zero then the body is said to be in equilibrium okay so uh so if you have this condition this means that an object is actually in equilibrium so meaning that the net force is equal to zero so what are the 
the kuan gani the two situation where the net force is equal to zero first dapat at rest ang imong object meaning the forces is equal to zero and second your object is moving at constant velocity okay so if na akay two situation ay ana then therefore there are no net force interacting on the object unless na akay external forces pero kung wala nang buka external forces then the summation of the forces on the object is actually equal to zero okay this is also true if the components of the net force are equal to zero so kay since imong force is a vector quantity the summation of forces along x is equal to zero also and of course the summation of forces along y still equal to zero kay since yung uh, kay since yung summation of forces mo si equal to zero then true put ni siya sa yung components okay so yeah i think that's the essence of newton's first law of motion okay so what pata na human sa newton's first law of motion so sa First law of motion, we talk about inertia. Diba? So, we know that inertia is directly related to the mass of an object. The larger the mass, the higher or the larger the inertia. Meaning, lisud ka siya e, e change iyang motion because of the kung mass. Now, okay, since we are talking about law of motion, so how can we, you know, kanang unsa na to siya pag um, pag kanang more siya uh, how to apply this law of motion and in what reference uh, in what frame of reference so more siya inana nga idea so basically yung newton's three laws of motion mo are only true if you are actually observing an object in inertial frame of reference okay so from the word inertial so this is the frame of reference where newton's first law of motion holds okay so usually sa ato ang physics courses is we actually use inertial frame of reference as our frame of reference because it is very hard for physics courses uh, for example sa inyo hanga delete mo ka major in physics uh, it is actually hard to to visualize non-inertial frame of reference okay so the kuan lang nilang duha the uh, the difference between the two kinds of frame of reference in laws of motion is ang inertial frame of reference is uh, when the you know when ang frame of reference is at rest at rest yun siya when nabuj na bubu siya constant velocity nagmubu siya constant velocity okay because this is where newton's first law of motion holds or the law of inertia holds however sa, sa non inertial frame of reference if ang imong inertial frame of reference is non accelerating meaning nagmove siya at constant speed or velocity yung non inertial frame of reference mo is actually accelerating so meaning hindi na ya, hindi na constant yung velocity niya so this is a, a type of frame of reference in physics where Newton's first law is invalid. So we will not use anymore the three laws of motion because it is now invalid because you observing motion in accelerating frame of reference, meaning, uh, yeah, accelerating. Because we have to observe motion kasi with respect to what frame of reference. Okay, so so usually sa ato ang kuan gid, sa ato ang uh, physics courses in general physics courses we use inertial frame of reference and the usually used nga example of inertial frame of reference is actually the earth or the ground although earth is actually not really an inertial frame of reference because it is actually revolving around the sun and it's, it is rotating uh, around its own axis diba? so approximately yung rotation niya is in the magnitude of 10 to the negative 4 or approximately in 3 cm per second squared although it is very small but in physics we cannot neglect that one however in general physics courses we can uh, literally neglect this effect because uh, it is you know uh, easy to 
to kanang solve problems if naata siya naata sa inertial frame of reference okay so ngano di ay dili ta dapat magnan inertial frame of reference okay so mo ni siya ang ang ato ang ato ang reason why do we not discuss accelerating frame of reference in uh, uh, basic physics courses first ang non inertial frame of reference is the origin of mga unreal forces mga fictitious forces for example the centrifugal forces so these are actually the fictitious forces okay so this will tell you because because you know nga na na, na feeling mong effect you already know nga uh, na ano na ay centrifugal forces but actually centrifugal forces are fictitious forces okay unlike sa centripetal forces when you move along a circle okay so mura kag kanang ilabay bitaw sa pa right for example like this one diba if mag move ka along the circular path okay so you are here so you feel that na ay mag move ni mo na pa labay diba as you can see this actually the centrifugal forces but actually the real forces is moving in this direction meaning always in the direction at the center of the circle kay diaman acceleration diba i mean diaman ang ato ang diba <laughs> remember mo sa atong newton ay sa atong kinematics in two dimension so so the acceleration is pointing uh, towards the center of a circle and in newton's second law of motion we we will know that the acceleration is uh in the same direction as your net force so basically kung nagmove ka sa circular path you can experience these centrifugal forces kanisha okay but that is actually in the non inertial frame of reference because your frame of reference here is actually your car diba kung magmove ka sa car so that is because your frame of reference is the car so what will happen is you can feel that nice centrifugal forces Okay? And the car is a non-inertial frame of reference because it is accelerating with respect sa Earth. Diba? Pero, if we like, you know, kanang makita na to, kung we have to observe the force or the object, the object's motion, with respect sa itong inertial frame of reference, what you will see is actually the forces only na here. Diba? Pointing on the center of the uh, path, circular path. So, even though these are unreal forces because of the fact nga naatay centrifugal, uh, naatay accelerating frame of reference, so we have to account also if we, uh, if we are talking about non-inertia, we have to account also those, those fictitious forces. But here in our discussion, uh, the non-inertial frame of reference is nowhere to be found because that is uh, very hard na, difficult to understand. Okay? So, again, pwede na to mahimong inertial frame of reference sa Earth. Even though dili siya inertial frame of reference, kaya ano gani? Nag-rotate man siya on its own axis. Namo siya acceleration. So, consider siya as accelerating frame of reference. But since ang iyahang acceleration is very small, so we have approximately i think three centimeter per second squared so that is very small compared sa uh, atong gina observe no motion sa object which is greater than that so we can neglect the effect of the rotation rotational acceleration sa earth okay so unsa pa may mga examples sa accelerating frame of reference so how about the coriolis forces so coriolis forces are actually the reason why the kanipitong sa cyclone why the cyclone looks like a uh, whirling wind na kan sa kuan like kan makita niyo sa sa eye of the typhoon diba so makita niyo sa northern hemisphere kay anong inani iyahang pag rotate sa southern hemisphere sa earth kay anong inani ang pag rotate so these are actually from the uh, these differences of two two kanang directions from northern and southern hemisphere of the earth respectively is due to the fact of the uh, Coriolis forces but again Coriolis forces are very small okay compared to the 
I mean, Coriolis forces have very small effect. Pero kung lang tawon niyo siya sa kanang sa kanang whole Earth yun, you can actually see the effect. Even though it is relatively small, but we can uh, we can actually kanang experience the effect. Okay, just like what I said. Okay, so sabi mga other kung sa mga non-inertial frame of reference. Okay, so example na last na example. For example, na ako sa merry-go-round. Okay, so accelerating man yung merry-go-round, di ba? So if I put a ball here from A, it moves siya from point B. With respect sa Earth, of course, it moves in a straight line, di ba? Pero with respect to the merry-go-round, okay, since accelerating man ang merry-go-round, so instead of like, uh, in the straight line, makita na to sa accelerating, nga mura siya og ni curve. Okay, mura siya ni Anna. So this is like the, kuan, the, the another uh, path of the object. So lisod siya, ikuan, di ba? Okay, because naman na siya other forces. Okay, the fictitious forces. So mga fictitious forces are, We did not know anything about its origin. Okay, so what a kabalo nga nang naasya dihaan. Pero may kifil da sa effect. Okay? So that is why uh, when you solve the dynamics of an object in non-inertial frame of reference, ay nakay dapat sa imuhang loss of motion. Okay? So fictitious means that these are the forces that we don't know the origin. Okay, what a kabalo nga siya hang kuan. Unlike sa itong mga forces here, kaling centripetal, we know nga naman siya uh, acceleration here, then therefore, dito po iyang centripetal force, di ba? So, unlike sa centrifugal. Okay? So, yeah. I think that's the essence of having inertial frame of reference. So, next uh, law of motion, the second law of motion is what they called as the law of acceleration so again the law of acceleration the law of inertia and the third law of motion are actually in the inertial frame of reference okay so always remember that so these are the frame of reference na nanong sa gito the newton's first law of motion holds meaning uh, if an object is at rest it is always at rest if, if an object is in motion it is always in motion i know it is always in motion at constant velocity. Okay, by the way, uh, on sa may relationship di aning non-inertial frame of reference ato ang uh, picture here. So, di ba, kung namo sa bus, di ba, sa bus na to, so, if ever nga, mo break ang bus, what will happen is, mo ato ka pa forward, di ba? So, in, sa frame of reference, sa bus, because the bus is accelerating, di ba, kung ma-break, mo, suddenly break or mo suddenly stop ang bus, di ba, mo move ka forward. Okay, so you can feel nga, nga nung ni move man ko, nga dapat, uh, because at rest ko, dapat wala ko yung net force. So, ang imuhang observation is na naka yung net force. But that is actually based on the bus. Kasi yung bus is the frame of reference mo. Now, if na ay nag-observe uh, sa, sa imuha, uh, gawa sa bus, meaning on the ground, respect the ground, makita niya nga, Nga U is actually a uh, walay net force. Okay? So, meaning that the summation of forces sa imuha is actually equal to zero. You stay at rest. Okay? So, that is the inertial frame of reference. Di ba? So, even though ni move ka pa forward, ni move ka pa ana, or backward, if mo accelerate imuhang, imuhang bus or frame of reference. So, basically, uh, yeah, I think that's the reason why we don't discuss non inertial frame of reference in terms of basic physics courses okay then the next one is actually the a law of acceleration so dirinapud is what will happen to the object when net force is not equal to zero so kung sa first law of motion the net force is actually equal to zero the body is in equilibrium so meaning that the force is at the object is at rest or the object is in motion at constant velocity okay so nga, what if kung kuna kay net force so if at uh, the first picture represent if the net force is equal to zero 
Kay since imong net force equal to zero, pwede siya mag move of constant velocity, then therefore the acceleration is equal to zero. So it will continue to move, to move, to move, uh, assuming that yung uh, surface mo is like wala friction. Okay? Uh, hindi siya frictionless. I mean, fric frictionless yung object mo, uh, yung surface mo dito, okay? So here, uh, yeah, so it will move at constant velocity. So how about if your object, uh, your net force is not equal to zero, meaning that you apply a force on the object. So meaning that it will accelerate. Okay, nag-apply naman ka og net force. So meaning that, tanaw na ang kamot diha. So you can see the hand that it will actually pushing the the uh, object pa dito, and the, to the right direction. So it will accelerate. Di ba? So, meaning that it will accelerate because the acceleration is in the same direction as your velocity. Okay, so how about if your object is opposed, I mean your force applied is opposing the, the motion of the object. So, dito man ang motion sa object as you can see the velocity. So, eventually, mugamay mugamay kaayo imong velocity, eventually mo stop siya. So, what are the uh, net, uh, what are the external forces nga nagmagin ani? So, this is actually the friction. So, if the friction is opposing the motion of an object, so parang mo, mo kuan siya ka nang mo slow down. So, as you can see sa velocity na vector, so mugamay mugamay siya until eventually mo stop because you are opposing the motion of the object. So, at awan yung kamot, mo siya mo oppose. Okay, so yung, yung net force is going uh, in that direction. Okay, so yeah. I think the main idea of second law of motion is uh, if the net force is actually uh, not equal to zero, the body will accelerate. So, mula na iyahang, iyahang, mm, iyahang idea. So, mo accelerate meaning that mo change na yung velocity. It can, uh, it could be the motion is the object is slowing down or the object is speeding up depending sa directions among net force okay so the best example to describe uh, the uh, net force with acceleration is kaning kuan kaning object moving in a circle okay in a uniform circular motion so kay di ba ang uniform circular motion is na siya constant speed but yung acceleration kay since sige man siya og uh, moving, sige mo siya change og direction from time to time then therefore mo accelerate siya even though yung acceleration mo, ay yung speed mo is constant. So, mo accelerate gapon siya, di ba? So, in a uniform circular motion, the net force acting on a body is, yung acceleration niya is in the same direction as the net force as you can see here. So, if ang acceleration is going to the center of the uh, circle or the circular path of the object so basically yung net force mo is also going in the same direction as your acceleration okay so since the acceleration is constant then therefore the net force is actually also constant so kaning force net force that is here is actually the centripetal force because your acceleration is the centripetal acceleration then the forces pointing towards the center of the uh, rotation or the uniform circular motion is also called the uh, centripetal force. So these are the true forces, unlike the centrifugal forces, because we actually uh, observe this object moving in a uniform circular motion with respect sa to ang earth, okay, with respect to the ground. So that is why we can see nga wala centrifugal forces diha. Okay, and we will not talk about centrifugal forces because we are actually in inertial frame of reference. Okay, so the next point is, uh, the main point of this slide is, first, the magnitude of the acceleration is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force acting on the body. Okay, if dako imong net force, then meaning dako put ang, ang acceleration, diba? So, basically, directly proportional yung magnitude ng accelerate the acceleration tsaka yung net force. However, yung mass niya, 
or what we call as the inertial mass because uh, inertial mass is because it is the property of a body that will resist the change in motion, di ba? Yung inertial mass. So, gitawag siya inertial mass because we are talking about uh, moving the object na, right? So, the mass is actually directly proportional to the force. Meaning that, kung dako siya og mass, dako yung ka force nga kailangan para move siya. Di ba? And it is inversely proportional to the acceleration. Okay? So, meaning that if Dako imong mass, gamay ra yung acceleration. Okay? With constant force, ha? Ikaw with constant force. So, meaning kung constant imong force, uh, the mass, uh, actually, kung dako imong mass, gamay yung acceleration. Kung gamay yung mass, dako yung acceleration. Meaning, paspas siya mo kuan because of the smaller mass. Okay? So, this is actually the uh, the main idea of the second law of motion. And then the law of acceleration states that if there is a net external force acts on a body, the body will eventually accelerate. Meaning, mohawa na siya sa iyahang rest state or dili na constant iyahang velocity because of the fact that the body accelerate. So based on this relationship, the net force is actually equal to the mass times acceleration. So maugin na always na tumakita sa to ang high school physics, di ba? Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay? So, the same gap on sa uh, uh, if ato siyang i-compare sa ato ang law of inertia, the law of acceleration is actually body is in uh, non-equilibrium. So, dili na siya in equilibrium ang imong body here. Because na naman siya net force. Net external forces. Okay? So, actually, po dili sa law of inertia, I forgot to tell you nga we are actually talking about here external forces po, di ba? Because yung normal force mo at saka yung weight, uh, for example, sa coin in a glass, in a paper, is, uh, on a paper, is mura siya ka ng, uh, the external forces are the normal force and the uh, weight, di ba? So, if you add all of them, so the summation of external forces is actually equal to zero, meaning the net force. Okay? So, yung first law of motion is, the net external force is equal to zero. Yung second law of motion mo is the net external force is equal to ma, mass times acceleration. So, nana na external forces. So, nana na man internal forces? <coughs> Excuse me. So, internal forces is actually the forces uh, inside, of course, from the word internal, inside of the body. So, Basically, inyo na siyang man, ma, ato na siyang matakal in Newton's third law of motion on why the object, uh, what siya internal forces. Okay? So, yeah. So, kinanata. So, because of this relationship, uh, the SI unit of force is Newton. So, you already knew that. So, the mass, SI unit of mass is kilogram and the SI unit of acceleration is meter per second squared so therefore it takes uh, one newton of force to move the one kilogram of mass in one meters per a uh, one meter per second squared ng acceleration okay so ana ang iyang pag interpret of this uh, unit of force okay so basically yung base as a unit ng newton uh, ng as a unit sa force mo is kilogram and meters per second squared. Okay, so di na tayo mag-discuss ang mga base as a unit. Okay, so let's take note uh, for this part, we have to take note that mass times acceleration is not a force. Although iyahang as a unit is newton, but actually that is not a force. Okay? It is just a result or the effect on a body if there is a net external force. So, what will happen if there's a net external force? It will accelerate. Okay? So, MA is actually not a force. Unlike sa tension, sa weight, sa friction force, these are forces. But the MA is actually the effect only of the, on the body if na asay net external forces or net force. Okay? So, 
you might ask nga nganong mang oxalate ang body and we already know that the uh, Newton's law of motion only uh, valid if na siya sa inertial frame of reference. Diba? Dana, in, ang inertial frame of reference is non-accelerating. So, nganong na may acceleration? Actually, ang acceleration that you're talking about here is not the na, is not the frame of reference but the object itself okay so dili siya sa frame of reference sa object na na siya nga kuan nga nga perspective nga yung object is nag move uh, nag move with acceleration in an inertial frame of reference okay so again you might think also that the force that keep you from rest so just like what I said kung kanang mag naglingkod ka sa jeep tapos ang jeep kay uh, hit niya suddenly ang brake mo suddenly stop siya is actually the force of acceleration which is not true okay because again ma is not an is not a force the mass times acceleration uh what's keeping you from moving like forward because ni suddenly stop ang jeep is actually the inertia okay the inertia or the mass is what the one that keeps you from rest because na naman ka sa state sa rest diba so even though na i change sa motion of the jeep you eventually going forward because ano gani you are diba at first kay nag move ka like nag move ang jeep in a velocity v okay so of course im wala imo na siyang nakuha nga motion bitaw nga nag move ka at velocity v now, ang imuhang gisakyan nga jeep, can you suddenly stop siya? But kay since nag man ka, what will happen is you are actually put moving at constant V uh, in the same state nga ga ka. Okay? So, at eventually nga, ma-feel na ni mo ang effect sa, sa pag suddenly stop sa jeep, then therefore, ma-stop na din ka eventually. Ma-move lang ka forward. Okay? So, ina na ang concept sa... So, listen ka siya i-discuss diri sa online class. Okay? So, basta mahuna siya ang main kanang concept about inertia. Okay? So, yeah. So, if you have any question, just uh, tell me kung sa man yung na kuan ani nalibugan sa inertia. Okay? So, mo na ang mo keep forward or mo keep backward if mo accelerate, di ba? Karang mo feel ni mo. So, that is actually your inertia. So, before going to Newton's third law of motion, so, I have to differentiate the two misunderstood or misused nga terms, which is the mass and weight. So, di ba? Mo na itong ma... ma my experience uh, like mag adota sa kanang clinic we have to find the weight of the person so basically mass and weight are interchanged in everyday conversation but di man to ma blame but since you are actually in my class na you have to we have to uh, differentiate these two terms what is actually the main difference between mass and weight so mass is the inertial properties of a body inertial meaning that it is actually the uh, the property that keeps the body uh, resisting the change in motion okay so sa gitu, kung the larger the mass the kuang iyahang inertia so meaning you need a larger force para mo move ang uh, larger nga mass diba so mo na ang mass and mass is actually intrinsic property. What do you mean by intrinsic? So, intrinsic meaning na anan na mo. Dili na na makuha sa tanan. Okay? Because that is mass. Unless na lang kung mag-exercise ka. Pero, of course, uh, if uh, without those kanang uh, mga factor na makalust og mass, uh, so we have to uh, we have to make sure nga yung mass mo is stay constant lang all throughout. Okay? So, yeah, so I think intrinsic siya nga property just like uh, sa mga itong mga just like sa any di ba, anybody na maging molecule so, oh, di ko siya 
ya yeah, kanang na na sa imuhadaan ba so mo siyang mo na siya ang uh, intrinsic property okay so, I think you already discussed that one in your chem what is extrinsic at saka intrinsic property of chemicals di ba so yeah yung weight naman is actually a type of force a gravitational force di ba exerted by the pull of the earth and it has a magnitude equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity so which is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared diba so basically yung weight mo and mass are directly proportional pero yung mass mo is constant assuming na wala exercise uh, assuming lang okay so we have a constant mass all throughout pero yung weight mo will change depende kung asa ka for example if naka sa earth mag change gyud imong weight i mean kung naka sa moon mag change gyud imong weight because lahi man yung acceleration due to gravity which is approximately 1.6 diba or i don't know pila to ya hangkon pero 1 to siya approximately 1 so unlike sa earth mo gamay gyud imong weight kung naka sa moon compare sa earth diba Pero imong mass stays constant because that is your in, ex, intrinsic property na naman na nimo. So yung weight lang yung mag-change mo uh, depende kung asa ka. Okay? So one of the concept, misconception mang good is this one. So I'm not uh, fat shaming or anything body shaming. I just want to clarify this meme. Okay, that uh, that sir uh, kanang nagkuan siya nag, nagkuan siya kanang na popular yun siya because of this one if you're 100 kg on earth you are 37 kg on mars which is actually not true because again kilogram is a unit of mass so mass is actually the intrinsic property so this is actually a very bad meme okay because it actually have a misconception of the difference between mass and weight okay so yung weight lang yung nag-change mo all throughout pero yung mass is hindi because it is actually intrinsic property okay so again the mass does not change wherever you are and the mass is constant all throughout okay so however kung iyan yung kung ato ni siyang ikuan i i edit nga meme we can edit this one by simply saying na your weight in mars is not the same as your weight in earth okay so if we actually you know kanang uh, uh okay tiratamag ko anong shika ano okay so just uh uh just focus on your weight in mars is not the same as your weight in earth okay so these are actually the misconceptions sa ato ang mass and weight and also sa ato ang mga clinics diba because ang weight ilang ibutang nga weight kay atong kilogram which is actually atong mass but that is actually the uh, not kanang misused na term pero of course we accept that one because mo naman ato ang na na kanang na na kasi eh kan atong na na andan okay na andan na to usually na atong na nakita so uh, since you are in my class, you have to kuan yun, differentiate what is a mass and what is a weight. Okay? So, yeah. And take note that a body's weight act at all times. Acts at all time. Okay? So, kasi yung, uh, since you are actually in the uh, influence under the gravitational field sa Earth, yung, ba yung weight ng body mo, uh, yung a gravitational force on earth is actually pulling you diba so unless you are uh, you are actually moving uh, upward towards outer space so basically wala nang uh, wala na yung ma, ma pull si earth sa imuha but since you are actually in the earth so on the earth na nadyo ka sa earth is nadyo kay body weight okay always gina siya okay so kung magkuan mo mga free body diagram so always remember nga nadyo weight always gina siya mawala okay Okay, so, yeah, I think mula na akong, ako ang, uh, 
uh, kanang rag issue with the mass and weight. So the next motion or the next law of motion is actually the third law of motion which is also called the law of interaction or the action reaction uh, law. Okay, so uh, what is the action reaction law or the law of interaction? So if a body A exerts a force on body B, that is the action. Diba? Because you exert a force. And in response, the body B also exerts a force on body A. That is the reaction force. So, kay since you you exert a force, of course, mo exert push of force ay muha. Okay, so just like this one. If you punch a wall real hard, so this is the action force. So, what will happen is, the force also uh, exerts a force on you because you exert Ikaw may gano na og exert og force. So, mo react ra ang katong wall ni mo. So, muhatag mo siya og force ay muha, ba? So, this is the law of interaction. And, how about this one? Yung, ano mo, yung lady mo in a, a nag-swim siya. So, para mo accelerate siya in the direction of, uh, to the left. So, what will happen is, i-push niya iyang foot on the wall. So, kay since i-push man ay i- naghatag man siya og force, uh, on the wall so what will happen the the wall also will react to the force exerted by the foot uh lady's foot diba so yahang feet uh, mukuan man siya okay so uh, this is the reaction kaning wall so mo nang mo accelerate siya because the force will exert uh, uh the i mean the wall will, will exert a force on the lady so mo accelerate siya in that direction and then this one is the action. So, ikaw may gawin na una o og pangaway. So, mo nang mo react lang kaya po. Mo react ang wall. Okay? So, next example is this one. When you are running. Okay? So, so why do you keep uh, like uh, smoothing like in motion? Because of the, this one. Because you push the, uh, you push your foot pa dong sa, sa ground. So, this is the action. So, the ground also pushes you forward. And that is the reaction. Okay, the reaction of the ground. Okay, kami gawin na una ka ng hatag o force niya. So, basically, uh, nagkuha na siya sa imuhang, nag-react lang siya sa imuhang force nga gihatag in the first place. Diba? So, mo na siya ang law of interaction. So, now, uh, back to the uh, part nga nga uh, nga nung wala internal forces, nga nung external forces naman. So, this is actually the reason. Now, take note for a law of interaction, take note that you have to differentiate the preposition by at saka on. So, by means siya ang gahatag og force. Siya ang ga apply og force. Force apply. Ang on, siya ang nahatagan og force siya ang nag, nagsalo sa force na gi-apply sa usaka object. Di ba? Or sa usaka force. Okay? Meaning that, uh, take note also of the subscript that we will use all throughout the uh, Newton's law of motion. So, we have the force exerted by A on B. So, meaning si A, ang gahatagog force ni B is equal to the negative of the force exerted by B on A. So, si B in return, muhatag og force ni A, the reaction one. Diba? So, just like this one. So, basically, yung force na gihatag sa imuha, equal lang sila og a magnitude. So, as you can see here on the next equation. So, equal lang sila og magnitude, but they are in opposite direction. So, as you can see here, money ang force exerted by your hand on the wall. So, yung uh, force exerted by the wall on your hand, they are actually on opposite direction, but they are in the same magnitude. Okay, so kung unsa imong gi gihatag, so mo nang magdugo imong kamot, di ba? Kung magkuan ka og wall, kung dako ka yung pag, dako ka yung pagsumbag ni mga force, dako ka force imong gihatag sa pagsumbag. So basically, si wall, 
will react also on the same magnitude sa imuhang gihatag niya nga force. So therefore, na possibility nga ma-break ma mga bone sa kamot or because of the strong force that you give on the wall, that is actually the law of interaction. Okay? So yeah. I think that's the uh th this is the main two equation that if you are talking about law of interaction, they have the reaction reaction forces are on the same uh the same direction. I mean same direction, opposite direction, but the same magnitude. Okay, so mo siya og kung binato ka ng bato, batuhin mo din ang bato with the same mass. Okay? With the same acceleration pud. Ana bitaw. So basically, analogous na siya si Ana. So nga nang, balik sa part nga na walay internal forces. So always remember that your, for example, if na ako'y object, we know sa sulod is composed of like uh, atoms, electrons, di ba? So if I have here electrons, and ako'y say electron diri, so, ang force exerted by the electron, kay since repulsive man sila, ba? So, ako lang na siyang i-example lang ako, okay? So, nga nung internal forces is equal to zero. So, basically, yung electron mo at saka electron, uh, since same sila ng sign, so they are actually repulsive. So, meaning the force exerted by this electron is going here, and the force exerted by this electron is going here. So, as you can see, based on the law of interaction, they have the same magnitude but opposite direction. So, meaning if you add the two forces exerted by these two electrons with each other, the net force is actually equal to zero. I mean, the net internal force is actually equal to zero. Okay? Same also for all of the atoms and protons sa sulod yun. Okay, so that is why we will not talk about internal forces because in average, uh, if we add all of them, it is equivalently equal to zero due to the law of interaction. Okay, so ana lang. So, the, you have to take note that the action and reaction forces must act at different bodies and not only on a single body. For example... Uh, the force exerted by the hand on the wall is uh, nag-act siya sa wall. Okay, kay siya uh, naghatag man og force si hand sa wall. Now, in return, the reaction force, which is the force exerted by the wall on hand, so basically, uh, yung, yung, yung pag-apply ng force ni wall sa hand is na ni hand, di ba? Kay siya man ang, siya ang kibali ang ang receiver sa force. Okay? Sa reaction force. So, basically, they act on the same uh, different body, I mean. So, same also as this one. Nireact ang imuhang force exerted by the wall on the feet on the lady. And the force exerted by the lady on the wall is on the wall po siya gareact because naman siya sa wall gi-apply. Same also for this uh, example. Okay? So, they are on the different bodies and not only on a single body okay because of this law of interaction a single force or isolated force cannot exist okay always comes in paired with imuhang forces okay so as you can see here because of the law of interaction okay even though gani nga uh, long range forces diba gravitational forces mag exert gani ang body uh, for example, di ba, naakay earth. This is your earth. And naakay gi throw nga ball upward. Of course, mag-exert ang imuhang uh, force. Uh, mag-exert og force imong earth pointing downward, di ba? And of course, si si object would mag-exert mag po siya og force on the earth going upward. Okay, so ano bitaw? So, they are always comes in pair. So, this is the force exerted by the earth on the object and this is the force exerted by the object on the earth going upward so they are always uh, always comes in pair ang ato mga forces okay so for example like this one na ako yung computer monitor at rest okay on the table uh of course uh, due to the law of interaction 
So if we are only uh, kanang focusing on the monitor, so there are four forces basically. So basically yung uh, yung yung surface mo will exert a force on the monitor. So we have the force exerted by the surface or the table on the monitor and according to the law of interaction na pudyay opposite forces which is the force exerted by the monitor on the table okay so we have the fmt then the next one in terms of earth so the force exerted by the earth on the monitor is going downward because that is the weight of the object and the force exerted by the monitor on the earth is going upward just like what i did here Okay? So, yung mga forces lang na pinaka uh, nakilala natin is actually the normal force, the force exerted by the surface, and of course, the weight. So, we'll, uh, wata ka ba sa niya mga uh, special name aning nga forces, but we know that they are same magnitude of the uh, normal force and weight respectively diba according to the law of interaction so kanisha kanisha nga system is actually based on the isolated system lang isolated meaning that there are no external forces again okay so for example like this one he isolate na to ang two object the ground at saka si man so walang other forces okay so he isolate na to si lady og si wall so, these are actually our system, our isolated system. I-isolate na to si wall at saka si hand. So, this is our isolated system. So, these are basically based on the isolated system. So, these are system nga walay interaction with its environment, I mean outside of the system. Okay? So, yeah, I think this is the uh, end of our laws of motion. So, yeah. I think this is the one, the end. Okay, so there are four forces, okay, uh, related, uh, especially of the law of interaction. As you can see here, they are always comes in pair, yung mga forces natin. At saka yung mga, uh, yung makita natin sa, usually sa ating, uh, like, kanabitong sa ato ang mga, what are the forces interacting on the body is actually the normal force at saka weight kasi ito yung mga forces nga nag-interact uh, na nag-apply of force on the body okay so because uh, we have to we have to take note of what are the forces acting on the body so from the word on okay so you have to uh, take note of these two prepositions so ano ba lang difference niya okay so yeah we will now move on to concept problems okay so, first concept problem is an 80 kilogram man on ice skates, pushes his 40 kilogram son also on skates with a force of 100 newton. So, the force exerted by the boy and his father is blank. Okay? So, basically, we have to understand sa even though lahi lahi sila og mas, but if I say money ang man, I money ang father, money ang boy. So if the, uh, if the father pushes like his son, okay. So this is the force exerted by the father on the boy. And of course, kasi since nag push man sa og force ng one hundred newton, see if a uh, force put na exerted ni boy on father according to Newton's third law of motion is still equal to 100 newton but in opposite direction okay so that is independent of the mass of the a man a father at saka ni son okay so yeah so the next concept problem is consider any situation in which an external force say a push is applied to an object so, if Newton's third law requires that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, so yeah, why doesn't the reaction force always cancel out the applied force, leaving no acceleration at all? Hmm, so what is your say to this one? 
So, basically, yung reaction force mo, for example, mag-apply ka og force here. So, you apply. So, mag-apply mag ka og force diha. So, using imong hand. Of course, mo accelerate siya in that direction. So, the force exerted by the applied force is going in that direction. Diba? So, this is the force exerted by the object on your hand. Assuming that ang imong gigamit sa pag-apply is si imong kamot. Diba? So, why doesn't the reaction force always cancel out the applied force? No. Because the object is our interest. Siya man ang accelerate. Diba? So, if we only discuss on what are the forces acting on the object, the reaction force, which is the force exerted by the object on the hand, is not, hindi siya kasali. Kasi, uh, we have to only, kanang, uh, ibutang lang nato ang mga forces na katong exerted on the object of interest or on the body. So, basically, hindi siya mag-cancel out because they are actually act at different bodies. So, yeah. So, take note of this one. Act at different bodies. Okay, so I think mo siya. So, last concept problems. So, we have for an observer in an inertial frame of reference, identify which of the following statements are true and which, if any, are false. So, number one, if there are no forces acting on an object, it will not accelerate. Of course, if wala jay forces acting on an object, you should accelerate because the summation of forces is equal to zero and according to uh, first law of motion and second law of motion, if wala forces, then it could be either at rest lang object or constant velocity, meaning it will not accelerate. Okay? So, letter B. That is true, ha? A is true. B. If an object is not accelerating, there must be no forces acting on it. Hmm. No. Okay. Even though nag constant velocity siya, there's still forces acting on it. Diba? For example, na ako'y object on the table moving at constant velocity. So, even though the summation of forces is equal to zero, naagya po yung forces nga nag-act sa iyaha, which is the normal force and which is the weight. Diba? So, even though wa siya ga-accelerate, nag-move siya at constant velocity, there's still forces acting on the object. So, this is false. How about this one? The motion of an object is always in the direction of the net force. So, take note of the word always. Is it always? Is it always? Is it always? So, I think no. Okay, even though sa circular motion, di ba, kay imuhang circular motion, iyahang acceleration is going ana man, so therefore the net force is going ana. So, na ay exception ana sa iyaha. How about if nag-truck, nag, naglabay ko og ball upward? Okay, so I have here ball upward. So, of course, mo na iyahang motion or acceleration, di ba? But the force acting on the object, assuming that walay air friction, is going downward, which is ang yang weight. So therefore, ang net force lang is the weight. Diba? Kaya wala na may other forces nga gaak sa iya ha. Okay? So unless kung naay uh, air friction. Okay? So as you can see, the net force is actually equal to the weight. Okay? And then the acceleration is going upward and they are in the opposite direction. So basically, hindi siya always at some point lang. Okay? So yeah, I think that's the uh, the statement is false because sinabi niya always. So sa, uh, uh, pwede din the motion of object is sometimes always, uh, sometimes in the direction of the net force. Pwede din yan yung statement. Okay? How about this one? The mass of an object depends on its location. So, false, basically. <laughs> so, now, okay, okay. Ang weight ang of an object only depends on its location. Okay, the mass is, again, does not change wherever you are. It is like an intrinsic property of a matter. Okay, or, or of or, of an object. Okay, so, more than that. 
Okay?